What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with The Golden Perspective. This week, we are looking at the Glassnodes Insights, week 15, titled Weakness in the Recovery. Let's get into it. Before that, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. I know it's been a while. I appreciate everybody who has maintained their uh, stewardship in this channel. And uh, also, uh, leave a like, a comment. My one request is that you please be civil in your discourse. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free for all of us to execute. And you may just feel better, you know, in the end. So anyway, uh, let's get into it. Thank you so much. The Bitcoin market pulled back this week after a breakout from the multi-month consolidation range. Prices have thus far struggled to find sustained upside momentum. And there are indicators of a modest volume of profit taking by investors. The Bitcoin market traded lower this week, coming off of an opening high of 47,102 and slipping to a low of 42,183. This market weakness follows a relatively modest price breakout from the multi-month consolidation range that has been established since mid-January. On-chain activity and spending behavior suggest that investors have been taking profits during the recent rally and that we are yet to see a convincing influx of new users or demand. In this edition, we will explore the nature of the market recovery across on-chain activity and network profitability as a measure for growth and health of the Bitcoin user base. We will also explore some of the mechanisms that enable the interesting dichotomy of BTC den uh, denominated transaction fees and block subsidy being near all-time lows, while competition in the mining industry sets all new time highs. The executive summary is that Bitcoin market pulled back this week as it struggles to establish the upside price momentum. On-chain activity remains fairly muted, suggesting that there is little growth in the user base, minimal inflows of new demand, and the market remains largely hodler dominated. Investor spending behavior be appears to be switching from dominance of loss realization towards a modest amount of profit, taking 58% of transaction volume is currently realizing a profit. Aggregate Bitcoin transaction fees are currently near all-time lows, a result of a confluence of factors including SegWit adoption, transaction batching, an aforementioned lack of demand of Bitcoin block space. Now that's interesting to me. Bitcoin fees are currently near all-time lows. Okay. It's a big thing I talk about otherwise. Okay. Despite this, U.S. denominated minor revenue is up 150% compared to after the last halving event, and both hash rate and protocol difficulty are setting consistent all-time highs. This is the range at which we operated in. It was pretty much just a down, down, down week last week for week 15. <clears throat> so here we go. On-chain activities continues to languish. A powerful set of tools for tracking the cyclical nature of Bitcoin cycles is on-chain activity, broadly described as the uh, utilization of block space via active network participants, sending transactions and settling value. Metrics which describe this include active addresses, entities, active addresses or entities, transaction counts, mempool congestion, and fees paid. Across the suite of metrics, it is hard to find many observations that suggest the network user base is recovering or growing strongly. The number of active entities, analogous to uh, daily active users, remains within the bear market channel that has been established over the last six years. That said, the current active uh, entity count of 296,000 per day is at the upper end of the channel and a sustained expansion higher would be constructive. This is the number of active entities with 14 moving, 14 day moving average, you know, moving all throughout here. It looks like, you know, it's, it's creating new highs. So that's interesting, but it's nowhere from this, uh, you know, the length of time from here to here. Okay, transaction counts are also relatively lackluster, currently at around 225,000 transactions per day, which is similar in magnitude to during the 2019 bear market as with active entities. This metric has, uh, as with active ent entities, this metric has recovered from the lows of the collapse back with, uh, in May, July 2021, but is a far cry from the hype cycle observed during bull markets, shown in green. What is quite interesting to see is that over the longer term uh, macro timescale, 
Both of these on-chain activity metrics continue to climb, even during bear market trends. The signals of, this signals a persistent growth in the HODL user base. HODLers are those investors whom are relatively price insensitive and active Bitcoin users and accumulators irrespective of market conditions. As a result of this relatively low demand for Bitcoin block space is that there is little network congestion and thus low aggregate and transaction fees paid. Total transaction fees paid to the Bitcoin miners has been languishing nearing all-time lows since, mid, uh, since May, supporting the above observations that the recovery in on-chain activity is lackluster at best. <clears throat> It should be noted that there are numerous factors that impact network congestion and total fees paid, which includes the adoption of efficiency upgrades like SegWit and transaction batching. Now, I will argue strongly that SegWit is not an efficiency upgrade. Okay, moving on. The transaction batching, uh, okay. The chart below shows that since June 2021, there has been a significant uptick in SegWit adoption and utilization as more wallets and exchanges implement the technology. Now, if you wanna know what SegWit is, go read about this because it's essentially a fork to Bitcoin that is not what Satoshi made. SegWit was not part of Satoshi's Bitcoin. Okay, next chart also shows the expansion of spent outputs that are using SegWit technology with the uptick after June 2021 standing out. Transactions using SegWit are more data efficient, which allows more transactions to fit into each block while also having cheaper transaction fees. True, SegWit did remove some important things that were originally put into Bitcoin that they apparently felt weren't important anymore that created more space for transactions instead of increasing the block size. In the current market, this is part of a confluence of factors that are driving fees lower as well as uh, articulated by Alex Thorne of Galaxy D Digital in this thread. Uh, it's important to know, however, uh, you can click on this thread if you want to go back to this uh, article. It's important to know, however, that a low demand for Bitcoin block space and low on-chain activity as a result of bearish market conditions is one of the major driving factors between be, behind low aggregate transaction fees. Fair enough. Mining compensation reaches all-time high. Despite network transaction fees being near all-time lows in uh, Bitcoin denominated terms, the competition in the mining industry continues to set new all-time highs. The protocol mining difficulty has now reached a new all-time high with each Bitcoin block requiring 1.22 or sorry, 122.78 Zeta hashes to solve. This would be equivalent to 7.93 billion people on earth each guessing a shock 256 hash 15.5 trillion times every 10 minutes to solve each Bitcoin block. That's quite extraordinary. That's why it's secure. So you can see this all-time hash, boom, just happened. The estimated hash rate is currently ranging between 190 and 215 exahash per second, which is around 20% higher than the prior all-time high set just before the mining ban was enact enacted in China in May last year. The hash rate has continued to expand higher since June of last year with growth largely uninterrupted, uninterrupted by the recent bearish market conditions, nor the numerous macro and geopolitical headwinds that are in play. Competition in the mining industry is notoriously fierce as miners seek to arbitrage the energy to BTC price ratio by finding the cheapest available sources of power and capital funding. As hash rate competition expands, ASIC efficiency in rigged uh, counts increase. The revenue earned per hash is driven over lower, uh, even lower over the long term. The chart below shows this long term trend, which illustrates in log scale just how competitive the landscape for acquiring the ever declining Bitcoin blocks rewards is. Doo, 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 doo. Despite both the immense competition and the BTC denominated block rewards being near all time lows, USD denominated minor revenues remains 150% higher than immediately following the most recent halving event in May of 2020. Miners currently earn approximately $207,000 per exahash they apply to the network. This is also 40% more revenue than during the final capitulation event of 2018 bear market. 
As that time, prices were trading between $3,000 and $4,000, and the BTC block subsidy was twice as large as it is to, as twice as large as it is today. Network profitability, and I remember back then, um, right at that uh, the last halving event, um, that it basically took just under $9,000 to break even for the miners. The Bitcoin had to be $9,000. So these were at loss times at three and 4,000. Network profitability. Assessing the profitability of Bitcoin network is a useful tool for assessing possible sell side risks and gauging whether the market is hodling or taking profits. The chart below presents the proportion of the market that is currently underwater on their position. Here we use the per uh, percent of addresses in pink, entities in green, and supply in blue that are in profit. As a measure of aggregate network profitability, we can see that the current bear market is not as, as severe as uh, the worst phase of all prior cycles, with just 25-30% to 30 of the market being at unrealized loss. It remains to be seen if further sell side pressure will drive the market lower and thus pull more of the market into unrealized loss like prior cycles. Note that over time, more coins and UXTOs will have uh, last moved as much cheaper prices and thus the long-term uptrend in these metrics is expected. Interesting. The 2015 was pretty uh, drastic difference between these lines, but they're getting tighter and tighter along the way. Bitcoin long-term holders (LTHs) currently hold 13.66 of the supply that is at unrealized uh, loss, which is a sum approximately equal to the magnitude of the amount of sell side they applied in the 2021 bull market. Long-term holder coins are at least likely to be spent and sold on a statistical basis. And it can be seen in 2018 and March of 2020 that they have held through much deeper losses in the past. The proportion of long-term holder coins held at a loss reached over 35% of supply in the depths of previous bear cycles, which is 2.5 more relative coin volume than we have current in the current market. It's a lot more in profit. Short-term holders, STHs, own far fewer coins compared to long-term holders, 18.74 the supply. Uh, however, this cohort has seen a marked jump in profitability as of late. As the market rallied out of the consolidation range, new accumulators, short-term holders that acquired coins between 33,000 and 42,000 have returned to an unrealized profit, showing that investors saw value in that price range. This is a positive development compared to the recent market lows on uh, 22 January, where 100% uh, of the short-term coins were at a loss, improving, in, uh, improving investor profitability, especially in this more price-sensitive short-term uh, holder cohort, tends to lower the profitability, probability of panic-driven sell-side pressure. Now, anyone who's been watching the market as of this week, uh, you'll know that uh, the market corrected to, you know, 40,000 and maybe some of these, if they didn't take profit, were not anymore. We have, however, seen an uptick, uptick in profit taking and a decline in loss realization during this rally. Daily realized losses have declined from around 20,000 BTC day per day at the lows in January to around 8.3 thousand BTC per day today. Periods of high and sustained loss realization are typical of bear markets and the market has absorbed more than 8.3 thousand uh, Bitcoin in losses realized per day since late November. That's that low line down here. 20k here, 40k up there. In addition to the coins, realized, uh, coins realizing losses, the market has seen around 13.3 thousand BTC in profits realized each day since mid-February. Profit realization at this magnitude is not historically extreme, however, appears to be providing sufficient headwinds to prices. Heavier profit realization is typical of bullish conditions where a large influx of new demand is capable of absorbing the supply and pushing the market higher. On there. And finally, we can see that the dominance of the spent volume profitability has moved towards a profit bias 
In other words, 58% of the transaction volume is currently realizing profit, which is a change from the bias towards realized losses that was in place since December. Sustained periods of realized loss dominance are typical of bear markets and a reversal to a dominance of realizing profits can signal that sentiment is shifting and demand is capable of, uh, to absorb the sell side. However, given prices continue to struggle, it does suggest that the demand side remains somewhat lackluster and that investors are taking profits into whatever market strength can be found. This is what we saw, right? Summaries and conclusions. The Bitcoin market has pulled back this week after a breakout from the multi-month consolidation range. Prices have thus far struggled to find much sustained upside momentum and there are indicators, indications of modest volume of profit taking by investors, especially across on-chain activity metrics like transaction counts and active users. The recovery has thus far been uh, relatively lackluster and continues to suggest Bitcoin is a hodler dominated market with fewer new investors flowing in. Lackluster is this word of this week they got written in this article. That said, network profitability has improved, indicating significant reaccumulation took place since January. The aggregate profitability of the network remains in a far healthier position compared to bear, uh, prior bear cycles. Low demand for Bitcoin block space manifests as low aggregate transaction fee paid to miners, which has the Bit uh, current Bitcoin uh, or BTC denominated block reward near all time lows. However, and what that means is there's the 6.25 in the block reward, block subsidy, and then there's just the fee is collected. However, despite this, competition within the Bitcoin mining industry is setting all new time highs with minor USD revenues up 150% since the halving, which was two years ago, uh, and the hash rate now at 20% higher than the previous high in May of 2021. What do you think about all that? I would love to hear your opinion. Thank you so much. And again, um, you know, you can also go follow me over on uh, Library, fantastic platform, also known as Odyssey. Uh, link is down below uh, in the uh, description. Thank you so much. Love you all. Take care. Peace.